childhood sweetheart, she used to like each other. She knew everything about music, chess, calligraphy, and painting. She was brave and capable, but smart and considered everyone as brothers. She only treated people around her as brothers and had an indescribable feeling towards him. He was cold and aloof, merciless but only gentle towards her. He saw countless boys coming out of the girl's door time and time again, and endured it. Finally, he saw the girl being confessed by others and gave up. He hid and never saw the girl again. The girl disappeared for a year after that day the last two met at the annual meeting, and the boy just said hello before going. The girl blocked his way and said, Li Jingchen, are you avoiding me? She was gentle and intellectual, but lost her brother at a very young age and changed her old style. The glimmer of hope buried in her heart had already changed, and she had to endure it alone ever since. My little sister at home. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ding the sound of a girl knocking on the door came from outside. I saw that the outsiders haven't walked in yet Xia Shui walked in and pulled a group of elementary school students outside into the room. She glanced at the butler, who walked over and smiled, saying, Today. Just as I was about to speak, the girl in the room walked out and looked downstairs at her, saying, Xia Shui, you want to die. You're taking so many people with you, and you think your life is too long. Xia Shui smiled and looked up, saying, Sister Air, if you don't tell me, no one will know. She finished speaking and walked upstairs. Upstairs, the older sister had just closed her eyes and was about to speak when the butler next to her walked over and said, Miss, is Mr. Lee waiting for you outside? Xia Yuyin chuckled and said to her little sister, Be careful with me. Don't blame me for not warning you when I come back today. Don't play anymore. After finishing speaking, she patted her head and turned her head into the room. After a while, she came out and walked out. Everyone is below. Oh. Xia Shui shook her head. This is my second sister, Xia Yuyan, a girl who combines beauty, intelligence, and intelligence. It's just too verbose. Everyone said one after another, what kind of person is your elder sister? Xia Shui shook her head. My elder sister. Just about to speak, the girl walked in and the boy behind said, Are you still going to the library tomorrow? The girl let out a sigh and asked the butler to close the door casually help her carry her luggage up. The girl looked up at Xia Shui on the second floor, her eyes sharper than before. Say. Xia Shui, what are you doing? Get down here for me Xia Shui brought someone to play at home again, and she wanted to go out and play. After turning her head, Xia Shui shook her head and said, Oh, let's go play in the yard for a while. Who was that brother just now, sister? When Xia Wan heard her younger sister ask her, she didn't look back and said, When will you be in charge of my affairs? Remember not to touch the flowers in the hospital. If you miss a petal, I'll ask you. Then he turned his head and walked into the room. Everyone was whispering, and Xia Shui looked around and walked out, opening the door for everyone to play outside. Her body trembled. In the old courtyard, there are not many colorful decorations, only some flowers planted by the ladies. There is also a beautiful garden, which can be said to be a little paradise for girls. The flower room is filled with flowers and plants, and the most I dot catching one is a beautiful and enjoyable swing woven with flowers. As soon as the girls enter, they are attracted by it and surrounded one by one. The girl who was watching had a good relationship with Xia Shui. The girl smiled and said, Shui, can we all play here? Can we also play on the swing? That's for sure, just don't destroy the flowers on top. Xia Shui smiled and said. Then we won't be polite. After speaking, everyone lined up one by one, looking left and feeling right. Xia Shui thought to herself, anyway, it's not me playing. Even if there are fewer leaves, it's because everyone did it and it's related to me. Just when they didn't even notice, two boys walked out of the corner it doesn't look very big, but the two of them seemed to be talking about something. Hey, 
it's also good for Jing Chen to join the army. You're only a few years old now. When it's time to retire, you won't be able to earn money. It's enough for the rest of your life. Do you think I don't want to? Xie Jingchen glanced at him and said, joining the army is nothing more than handing over one's life to the country. I'm afraid of death, I'm young now. I just want to be like Qin Yu. Qin Yu's family is a noble family, and they have been soldiers for generations. Of course, his parents want him to join the army. So I don't want to give my life to the country. I don't want to, I don't want to. I still want to play. It's better to finish reading comfortably in the prime of my youth. I won't say it anymore. Anyway, I won't join the army. Even if I die, I'll just study hard. Forget it, play and study every day. Pop. Brother, what are you doing? After speaking, the two of them looked up and saw that Schwer was staring at them yo, little sister is in the courtyard. Come here, brother, give you candy to eat. Go away, Xie Shui. What are you doing? As she spoke, she looked at a group of elementary school students playing happily around the garden next to her. Xie Shui, your skin is itchy, so I'm not afraid your sister will scold you. Sister wouldn't scold me, but it's my brother who doesn't take his job seriously. Just now, I heard that my brother's courage to become a soldier is everyone's dream, and he doesn't want to go. I'll do it for you what are you saying about Xie Shui? Xie Jingchen looked at her and was about to hit her. His brother next to him grabbed him and said, it's better not to make trouble. We skipped class today and caused a big scene. Your mother and father must be protecting your little sister. Are you a brother? You should endure it. Yeah, I just love watching you hit me but can't hit me, my brother. Stinky girl. Just as he punched and let go, he angrily said, forget it, who made you my sister. After speaking, he left without looking back. The proud girl smiled and the girl next to her walked over. My brother just wanted to be like your brother, carefree and carefree. Xie Shui looked down at Qin Yui inside, saying, my brother doesn't have any ambitions. Your brother, your family has been in the military for generations, isn't it? Great, okay. Even you think it's good, but with so many male soldiers who are only twenty years old and can't even see their loved ones, leaving this world forever is not a good thing. I have already thought about it. Since one day I will leave this world, it's better not to give him any love in advance. What does that mean? Xie Shui couldn't help but scratch her head. Qin Yui touched her head and smiled, saying, I need to go back and play with you. Oh, then you go and let's play together when you have time. Watching Qin Yui leave behind, Xie Shui didn't know what kind of emotion there was. Perhaps several years later, she still didn't understand this feeling, or maybe she will never understand it. Xie Yuyan got off the car with her backpack on her back and walked into a room where the boy came out. She put down her backpack and skillfully took out the book, sitting down and taking out the book to start writing homework come here for a moment hey, Li Jingchen's question oh, just connect the two together. Oh, Li Jingchen, what's wrong with you today? You're absent thought minded. Xie Yuyan looked up at him with a questioning expression, but Gu Jingchen turned her head and didn't look at him. She said, it's nothing, there's something at home and she won't come over in a few days. Oh, what should I do? If you're busy, I'll do it for you. I'm fine. If my sister happens to be back, I can ask her. Li Jingchen nodded and took a sip of water. Li Jingchen, what's up with your family? Can I help you? He turned his head towards her and said, nothing. Nothing big. Oh, really, well then. Xie Yuyan felt relieved after receiving Li Jingchen's answer. By the way, after finishing the college entrance examination this year, you will be going abroad. Aren't your parents reluctant to part with you at all? Xie Yuyan asked him. No. I don't have it either. It's really enough. Why do parents want their children to go out? Thinking of my unpopular brother is a headache. 
he has already gone abroad and still looks unattainable. Thinking about leaving him soon, he misses him quite a bit. But he really doesn't look like a brother. Where's the brother who gets scolded by my mother every day? What do you think? After speaking, Xia Yuyan looked up at Li Jingchen and touched his head, saying, Are you okay? You're absent thought minded No, I'm thinking about what I should bring. Oh, actually you don't need to bring anything, just bring your brain. After saying that, lift your eyes and take a bite of the sweet fruit on the table, then smile. Pack up your things. I'll leave first. I'll see Li Jingchen at the beginning of the school year well, be careful on the way. Okay, desk mate. After finishing speaking, Xia Yuyan left. The book that Li Jingchen had not flipped in his hand happened to stop at the page the girl asked him, and it was only this page that he mercilessly folded into a small gap. If he didn't look carefully, he couldn't even tell it. His smile couldn't help but be happy. When he closed the book, packed his things, and left. Chapter 2 Qin Family Villa You are listening at NovelFull.audio Qin Gu sat by the warm terrace listening to the noisy outside and squinted her eyes. After a while, she was awakened by nearby Sound's brother, you really plan to join the army otherwise, everything has been packed up. Do you think I'm joking? Mom and cousin, it's just you, are you serious? Qin Yu, are you going to anger me to death? Xiao Ge just lost her brother. Are you trying to make me lose my brother too? Qin Yu looked at his little sister and looked at her angrily, and after a while, the corner of his mouth curved. Don't worry, I will pay attention to my safety and bring you candy when I come back. Qin Yui couldn't help but laugh as she watched her older brother smile at her. The Qin family has been in the military for generations, and it has been passed down from generation to generation, but she still couldn't escape this fate. Her older brother had a dream of becoming a soldier since childhood, but she didn't think it was just a life of licking blood from the edge of a knife. She didn't think much about it, but fate would never favor the Qin family. Qin's brother was an example of being injured in a mission and died on the spot. Are you sure, are you sure? Brother of course, didn't you always know about brother? All right, don't call me my sister when you're out. Goodbye when I don't have your brother. After finishing speaking, Yui ran out. Only Qin Yu and the friends he brought back stood in place, you've grown your skills, this girl. Your sister also cares about you, right? My friend comforted him by patting his shoulder. Qin Yu took a breath and looked up at the black girl upstairs. Her eyes met, and Qin Yu quickly moved away. The girl upstairs walked down. The girl upstairs walked down step by step and stopped as she passed by him. The boy next to her looked at her with confusion and said, Do you still have a younger sister at home? No, my cousin. You've seen it before when did I see a boy wonder the boy looked at the girl with a gentle smile on his lips. When he was looked at by those gentle eyes, her face couldn't help but blush slightly. Qin Ji's gaze shifted. My cousin has just arrived and is about to leave. Oh, there's something in the team that needs to be trained for a while. I'll let you know. Cousin, do you support me? Why did my cousin come to ask me about things he had decided on? Some things, since he has chosen them, may only add to his troubles, right? After speaking, he took out a box and put it in his hand. This is my brother's favorite thing before he passed away. I hope you can be well. Safe, just leave first the two of them watched the girl leave and stood in the living room for a long time, dumbfounded. Hey, you said I've seen her before. When just Chin Kai is her brother, are you saying? Um. Who else could make her so sad no wonder her words don't seem like those of her age at first glance damn it. I have to be good to my cousin, otherwise I won't let her down she must have loved to laugh before, Chin. Kai was also a tough person. Even his younger sister. Hey. I won't say it anymore. I'll leave after finishing the reunion dinner, and you too Chin you asked him, and the boy shook his head and said, no, 
we have to go back. I'll come back and pick you up later. After saying that, he left this person, still like that, after seeing off his friend, picked up his things and lay on the bed. Yunqing a certain bar on the exquisite dining table sat a girl picking up a cup drink, little uncle, why can someone else's brother be at home and behave properly? Why can't my brother? It's not appropriate to be in the military that night, but it happened to be at the time when my cousin left. You know, I don't understand, but I understand more than anyone else. My cousin feels very sad. Indeed, my cousin treated us very well before he passed away, but why did God treat him like this? It's not fair. It's not fair at all. What did the little girl think? The man put down the wine at hand and patted the girl's shoulder, signaling her not to drink anymore. It's better not to touch a little girl. The girl patted the table. Anyway, I don't care. If he wants to go, he can go there. If it's a big deal, when we meet in the future, we'll just treat him as if he doesn't have this brother. I only have a little uncle and a cousin. Little uncle won't want me, will he? The girl looked at the little uncle and smiled happily. It's good if you're happy, but after all, he's your brother. Don't argue for him, isn't everything he does only for his own consideration. I've figured it out. Since I've made a decision, he doesn't want to consider the bigger picture for me, so why don't you think about this brother? After speaking, the man stood up and signaled to his men to send the girl back when he saw her leaving this matter is quite complicated, has he really made a decision? The person next to him said. I heard others say that young Master Qin is indeed preparing to go. It seems that he is determined should we help him, no need, since the decision has been made, no matter how others help, it will be of no use. After speaking, the man stood up and left the bar. Chapter 3 Likes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Cemetery rows of tombstones stood in place, with people or friends coming to pay homage to their deceased loved ones everywhere. Chin Gu got off the car and stood there, seeing off the servants and walking alone. Today, she was different from usual, wearing a white dress with no smile on her lips. She slowly squatted down in front of the tombstone, holding fresh white roses in her hand, and slowly placed them in front of the tombstone. Barely smiling, gently touching the name of her tombstone brother with her hand. There were countless waves in her heart brother, do you remember last year today when you said you liked me wearing dresses the most? I happen to be wearing this dress today. Just to show you. I'm going abroad soon, and Xiaosu is already one and a half years old. You can still rest assured to leave it to your parents to take care of you. It's much better than leaving it to me. You can rest assured to go abroad. I will take good care of myself. But I just hope you can rest assured and take good care of yourself. After saying that, she controlled her emotions, wiped away her tears, and poured a glass of water and wine under the steps. You know I never drink. Today, let's have a good drink, which is the best farewell. After saying Qin Gu, raise her glass and say goodbye. After drinking it all, get up and turn back. Hey, you said we should come a man next to him was pulling another man over and three people were facing each other with four eyes. Qin Gu lowered her head and was about to leave, as a man in military uniform walked over next to her. Qin. Gu, your brother. Before leaving, he told me to take good care of you and come to the team when he has time no need, Captain Muyu. I will be going abroad in a few days. Thank you for taking care of me before. After saying that, I turned around and left with a smile on my face the man next to him looked at the evening rain, full of doubts. Mu Yu is Qin Kai's younger sister the man only remembered what he had met before at the Qin family how could it be? She looks very unhappy. How could my brother be happy when he dies? If it were you, would you be happy? I seemed to realize that I had gone too far and quickly apologized. I apologized that the supervisor made me emotional. It's okay, can you tell me his story? I happen to have material in the proposition my father asked me to submit, please you really want to hear it, 
but those who work in our industry really put life and death aside. Every time they take on a mission, they also risk their lives, so these family and family relationships cannot be said to be lacking. They can only say that. Before we finish speaking, the person next to them answered if it should be interrupted, it may disappear with the passage of time. After speaking, he held back his tears and followed him out of the cemetery, got into the car, and left. Chin Garden Chin's mother brought up the food on the table and helped the elderly family sit down. The elderly person put on his glasses and glanced at Chin Yu with a kind expression. They looked at the nearby family rushing towards them, led by Chin Ji's parents. In the end, the two of them insisted on sitting in. Their eyes were red with no energy, and the people next to them dared not say anything. Chin's younger sister next to her comforted her cousin's mother, saying, Auntie, look at the certificate I just received today, isn't it amazing? The two of them only managed to smile when they met each other. Chin Yu walked in and looked at his aunt in the seat. His uncle's heart thumped and he pulled out a smile. Auntie, my uncle is here, what are you doing here, playwright? Chin Xiaomei glanced at him and said, Turn around and stay away from him. I heard you're leaving, let's come and see you off. Be careful on the way, Auntie said and turned around to sit down. Oh, okay, since Auntie has said that, she must have finished speaking and touched her chest before bowing to Auntie and Uncle. She sat down in her seat, greeted her grandfather, and glanced at the person next to her. She patted her mother and said, Where's my cousin? I saw her yesterday. Oh, your cousin went to pay homage to his brother. Let's go for a while. Hello, sit back and listen to your grandfather talk to you. Oh, okay. Chin Yu smiled and lowered his head. After a long silence, my grandfather smiled at everyone and stood up. He picked up his cup and said, I won't drink anymore. I will offer tea instead of wine to everyone. I hope Xiao Yu can pass the assessment smoothly, and I also hope that our Qin family is healthy and safe. Drink it all in one gulp after speaking. Everyone also smiled at each other and said together, Peace, success. Qin Yu looked at her sister's figure in the crowd, holding her chest stubbornly and eating slowly. Ji Fan beside her wiped the corners of her mouth and smiled, saying, It's all over her mouth, eat slowly. It's okay. Just wash it up later. I just want to have a good meal now. Qin Xiaomei continued her previous steps and started eating, her mouth full of crayfish and her cheeks bulging, looking extremely cute. The little girls next to her all looked over and said with a smile, Sister is so cute. Qin Xiaomei turned her head and looked at the girl next to her, saying, No, you're cute, I'm not cute, I'm angry. After saying that, she glanced at Qin Yu and quickly walked away when she saw him walking this way. Uncle, I'll leave first. Eat well. Qin Yu walked over. This stinky girl really plans to ignore me. If she has the ability, she will ignore me for a lifetime. Sit in her seat. Hey, Ji Fan. I'm leaving, please take care of this girl to save me worry. She's actually not that brave, but she always pretends to be indifferent and timid. Ji Fan smiled and said, Are you asking my sister to entrust me with this? If you really say such words, your sister may never forgive you. No. I, I don't know. Anyway, thank you. When I come back, my mind is also very confused now. I'm actually very scared about Qin Kai's situation since you have chosen, let's just let it be. This is your choice. It's only in the family option. Can you do it first and then protect? Anyway, pay attention to safety. Okay, thank you. Remember to help me keep an eye on that stinky girl. The two of them smiled at each other after speaking. The outside door opened, and the two of them looked over. The girl outside walked in, and everyone looked over. The person next to them with a smile said, Your Qin Song is back. No, there's something wrong with her. Qin's mother looked over and anxiously walked over. The butler next to her wanted to help her, 
but she shook off her hand and said, Don't worry about me, I'm fine. She stumbled and threw her handbag onto the ground, looking at everyone unsteadily. She bowed, waved her hand, and smiled. Chin Yu looked over. Cousin, you had a drink. No. I just drank a little. Air Gua Tu is really delicious, just a little itchy. As I scratched my neck with my hand, the soft and red area on it made me feel heartbroken and anxious. Grandfather just calmed down and called for a doctor. Miss Chin is allergic, right? Allergy I have never drunk alcohol before, and we have never noticed any allergies in Xiaoga's area. Qin Gu looked to the side, then glanced again, for a second half an hour later, the surroundings became increasingly blurry. Rubbing her eyes, she walked over to look at her mother. Her father smiled and said to them, Mom, why are you here? My brother, he usually doesn't like this kind of occasion. How do you get him to come? Qin Gu asked them with wet eyes, Where are people? Table. What about my brother? Qin Yu wanted to speak, but at that moment he couldn't say anything. He could only clench his fists and watch Qin Ji's disappointed expression. Qin Gu looked at him, but received an answer that he was lost and speechless. Tears couldn't stop falling down. I was tired, I was really tired. I gritted my teeth and walked upstairs, picking up a pair of scissors at the staircase. Qin's mother looked over. Xiaoga, you're drunk. Can you put down the scissors? No mom, my brother has left, and I really can't accept this fact. When I'm tired, let me go accompany him. After saying that, I'm going to pull the scissors around my neck. Qin Xiaomei stretched lazily and opened the door, quietly walking out. As soon as Qin Gu was about to say hello, she saw that the scissors in Qin Ji's hand were about to be stabbed in, standing still in place. Qin Gu, don't be impulsive. You're about to come forward and snatch her scissors. If you let go of my cousin, I'll hurt you. You still have aunts and uncles, how can they live if you leave? Just think of my daughter as unfilial, my grandfather as a disgrace to the old Qin family, and I don't have my niece. After speaking, I jumped down from upstairs, and my cousin's calm heart even reached her throat. She sat on the ground limp and powerless, and Qin's mother was scared unconscious. Come and watch their family banquet today. Why did you join in the fun? I'm here to take a look, isn't it? The governor watched as his father followed him into the door and saw Qin's daughter holding scissors and about to commit suicide. Looking at Qin Gu upstairs, she had no blood on her face and looked stunning in a white dress. They had seen her twice since the first time they met her, but is this the last one today? The nearby family members looked anxiously up the stairs. Qin Gu jumped down and ran away. His father next to him anxiously said, Take care of her. Okay, Muse ran over and saw Qin Yu walking by. Holding hands, before Qin Yu could react, Mu Zhe stepped on his shoulder and jumped up, just enough to reach the girl's waist. He hugged her and turned over to Qin Yu, saying, Could you please bring the bed of anger over? Qin Yu saw that his cousin was no longer in danger, wiped away his tears and pushed the bed of anger over. Qin Yu had just grabbed the pillar and released himself, moving her up to the top and releasing herself. The two of them fell down, and Mu Zhe tightly protected her. Mu Zhe got up and quickly helped your young lady go back to rest so he let out a long breath. Thank you, brother. After speaking, Qin Yu stared at him for a while. Brother, it's amazing. If there's anything I can do in the future, I will definitely help you okay, after all, it's a pity for such a beautiful girl today. Can you help me and your cousin? By the way, instead of the pain caused by death, it's better to take a break and be happy for a while. After all, there are still many difficulties waiting for her in the small future. Why cling to the present? After leaving, wave your hand. Brother, remember you. Young master, are you still leaving? Qin Yu's servants had already packed up their things and delivered them to him. Qin Yu clenched his hands and looked at his sister sitting on the ground limp. 
Ji Fan beside him hugged her and patted her head to soothe her. Qin Yu looked elsewhere, picked up his luggage and left without looking back. Everyone shook their heads. Chapter 4 Relieving Emotions You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Qin Yuan, the next morning, as usual, everything the servants did was peaceful. Qin Gu fell asleep peacefully in the room, woke up in a daze, stood up and looked at the chin color inside as usual. After confirming that his room was right, he felt a bit unable to stand up when he was about to get up. He helped the corner of the bed next to him, and his head hurt a bit. Thinking about yesterday when he went back to pay homage to his brother, he tried hard to recall everything that happened yesterday, and vague memories rushed into Qin Ji's great anger. I carefully recall yesterday when she got drunk and had a big scene at the Qin family. She sat limply on the bed, pinched her nose bridge, closed her eyes, and opened it. Qin Gu, even if you're doing anything, you can't take it off your mind. Some wines are really not drinkable. Dragging her heavy body, she poured a glass of water and accidentally saw a note on the bedside table. Opening it, it was written to her by her cousin. Cousin, I'm leaving. Although what you said while drunk was the real thing you wanted to say to us, my choice will not change no matter what. I always lean towards everyone when it comes to balancing the pros and cons of protecting my family and everyone. Maybe I'm a bit greedy, but I still want to say that I want everything. I will protect myself. Next time we meet, we will have dinner together, and the person who saved you will drag me to give you a message. There are still many difficulties in the future. I hope you can be strong and face everything. I also want to say to you, cousin, be strong. The future is good, forget to cherish it after reading the letter, Qin Gu put it back on the bedside table, changed into clothes, opened the door, and the butler stood at the door directing the servants. The girl next to her walked by, and you woke up, Miss Well, which room is my mom in? I want to go and take a look the girl smiled and said to her, they are in the courtyard. Let me take Miss over, and your classmates are also in the courtyard. Miss, should I put on some clothes? She hummed, the girl draped the cloak around her, helped her downstairs, let go of her, you go get busy. Okay, the girl walked away. Chin Gu pushed open the door and saw her classmates outside. There were many people coming, including her mother, father, and aunt. She walked over and looked at her mother. Mom, are you still? Okay. Qin Ji's eyes turned red, but she still had to hold back her tears. Her mother looked at Qin Gu and extended her hand to hug her. Qin's mother's eyes turned red, and she patted her head. It's okay, silly child. You're okay, Qin Gu still couldn't hold back a few tears. No, mom is not good for me, but yesterday I still couldn't calm down. It's not your fault, child. Everyone looked at them without saying a word. Grandfather was talking to the man next to him, and his voice was very calm. Qin Gu got up and walked over to his grandfather, who hugged her and said, Silly child, don't be like this anymore. Be strong. You are a part of our Qin family. Grandfather wants to. See you smile, okay. After finishing the Qin song, my lips curved as I stood up. My grandfather looked extremely cute. The man next to him also smiled. Qin Gu seemed to have hostility and returned to normal. Little girl, this is hostility towards me. Do you remember yesterday when we saw the stairs? Grandfather looked at the two and said, Xiao Gu hasn't introduced him yet. He is the son of the governor of a city, and Jiang Mius was also the person who saved you yesterday. After listening to her grandfather's introduction to Qin Gu, she felt uncomfortable all over. If there were two types of people she disliked the most in this world, one was the one who stuck to her asking for candy and the one who shamelessly shamelessly refused. Even though he was the first person she disliked the most, he was a good and humble person, but always kept a smile on her lips that was hard to figure out. Qin Gu stared at him for a while before reaching out to shake hands with him. In just a second, 
she let go and said thank you as if nothing had happened. After turning around, Xia Yuyan hugged her and said, Qin Gu, are you okay? I wasn't by your side even if you had an accident. Have you been injured? Suddenly, Qin Gu was hugged by Xia Yuyan before she could hide. Xia Yuyan looked left and right but couldn't see any wounds, so she gave up. Qin Gu cooperated with her 280 degree rotation and let out a long sigh. Okay, Yuyan. Yuyan picked up her phone from Li Jingchen's hand and took a photo of her. Hmm, it looks good. Later, Xia Yuyan took a step back and a large group of people rushed towards Qin Gu. Facing her classmates and friends who greeted Qin Gu, she felt a headache and didn't want to say anything. So she curved her lips and said to Yu Yen, You help me pack my things, I'll go back to rest first. I'll see you at school on Monday. After saying that, I put the flowers in Xia Yuyan's hand and quickly ran to the door to close it. Before I could react, Xia Yuyan's smile was no longer there. Now, only hatred was left in her heart, she knew she wouldn't come. She didn't forget to look at Li Jingchen, you came over to help me, what do you mean? Li Jingchen was not watching her turn her head and pretend to know nothing Xia Shui, wearing a floral dress next to her, smiled and looked at the second sister around her. Second sister also has today. Her round big eyes looked elsewhere, and as she walked over, she saw Qin Yui sitting in a wheelchair, being pushed by the little uncle who had been shouting at her. What's wrong with you, Yui? Xia Shui asked her. Qin Yui is holding the hand of the little uncle next to her. It's embarrassing. I can still walk. Sitting in a wheelchair like this, I feel so disabled. The little uncle next to me smiled and touched her hand. It's okay, you're all friends. Isn't it hurt to be scared? Is that so, is there someone who got hurt like this? Then, taking a step back and walking to the back corner, Mu Zhe smiled and said, Are you so spoiled? You don't understand. Xia Shui said, Let me push you. When you recover, we'll go eat something delicious, just know how to eat, Xia Jingchen said next to him. If you don't speak, no one will treat you as a mute. Don't talk anymore, no one will treat you as a person, Xia Shui, you are seeking death. As her own brother was about to come and attack her, she pushed Qin Yui away without giving her brother any chance to make up for it, as expected, it's always the person in your corner who gets hurt. Xia, who is standing at the door, stopped and took a long breath. Then Xia Yuyan and Li Jingchen placed their things in front of him and said, Could you please help me take them to the Qin Gu Tower? Thank you, sister. Li Jingchen, we still need to go up and organize the lessons for Qin Gu these days. Let's go. Watching the two of them swaggering away from him, Brother Xia was furious, why was it always me who was injured, why did I hate him? Although he was angry, he had to work hard to move things up. When Xie Shui tried to get her good sisters upstairs, Qin Yui got up early and left us. You're okay, Xie Shui said in confusion. It's okay, I was just a little scared. The little uncle was too exaggerated. Since he asked me to use a wheelchair, he couldn't resist it and had to sit there. After speaking, he took off his clothes and went upstairs. Qin Gu happened to pass by and saw my cousin standing well in front of her, walking over. Are you okay, cousin? Don't take it too hard, you scared me to death. Cousin, it's okay. I'm sorry that day. It's okay, let her go over what happened to her cousin. I've never blamed her before, but the despicable Qin you just left without a word and didn't forget to clench his fist. Let's go to the room first, cousin. You rest well. After bidding farewell, Qin Gu walked down and smiled. Chapter 5 Early Love You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Early in the morning, the students in school had already taken out their books and attended the morning meeting, especially the third grade students who came early to read. Class 1 in three years, Xia Yuyan finished reading and put down her book. She picked up a piece of paper from her desk and wrote some unknown words. 
She carefully rolled it up and threw it onto the desk of Qin Gu, knocking on the table Qin Gu was writing something when she was hit by an unknown note. Looking back, she saw Xia Yuyin gesturing. She shook her head and gestured to her, speaking after class. After watching Qin Ji's gesture finish, she made a silent gesture and turned her head to sit looking like a book. After class, Xia Yuyan packed her books and was about to get up when she was pulled back by Li Jingchen next to her. Watching Li Jingchen and Xia Yuyan confused. Li Jingchen, what are you doing? Li Jingchen took out the test paper in his hand and pointed to it. This, this is all wrong. If he didn't understand, he came to ask my class teacher to collect it. Can't you help me make some changes? I have something else to do with finding Qin Gu. You don't need me to help you go to school abroad. After speaking, Li Jingchen walked out. As for it, I won't write. She picked up the paper and walked up to Qin Gu, saying to Qin Ji's desk mate. Classmate, please come to my seat. Qin Gu glanced at her, and her classmates looked at the table next to Xie Yuyan. Li Jingchen smiled and agreed to tidy up his things before moving over. She was quite cheerful, not that Li Jingchen had a bit of beauty. Yu Yan pursed her lips. Qin Gu, I have two more questions left. As I spoke, I pushed the test paper over. Qin Gu looked at the questions and helped her draw the key points, mainly. And then I finished with Jiao Qiping. That's it. Hmm Qin Gu, we're going abroad soon. Are you excited? I can't even sleep anymore, haha <laughs> Qin Gu looked at Yu Yan's smiling face, but couldn't smile anymore, so she had to work hard and pull out a smile. Xiao Ge, why don't you laugh? I'm a bit creepy. Qin Gu shook her head and said, it's almost time for class. Sit down. Oh, hey, Xiao Ge, let's get together another day. Let's have an overseas gathering together, okay? No need, right, what I need, Xiao Ge. What I really need, okay? You don't even know how long I'm looking forward to it. Yu Yen, are you really good like this? Didn't your mother want you to become a cold and introverted person? Don't you feel uncomfortable like this? I'm not used to it anymore. That's because she feels that I don't have a sense of security in front of you, so it's not good for the university bully to nourish me. No, you should let Li Jingchen teach you. I didn't choose the same major as you, so I can't help you. So how do I think you can help me? What can Li Jingchen do for me? Last time, the person who only made me drink hot water when I had a stomachache was like a male best friend. I think it's just a learning machine that can't help at all. You're angry with her, Qin Gu smiled. How could I be angry with him? I wouldn't be angry with a straight guy. I have to go abroad and find a handsome brother to be my boyfriend. What do you think Qin Gu didn't speak, just paused. Going to school is boring, cultivating more interests and hobbies can make life rich and colorful, right Qin Gu was not speaking. She turned her head to look at Li Jingchen, who was staring at her. Xia Yuyan felt uncomfortable all over and turned her head down to look at the exam paper. Her hands were trembling and she picked up the book to cover herself. Qin Gu next to her said, this section is in English, not Chinese. You can read it with me because Qin Gu guessed she didn't bring an English book. Xia Yuyan moved her stool closer to Qin Gu and smiled at the English book, giggling foolishly. Qin Gu looked at her and said, I hope you can always be so happy. It's great. What do you mean? Yu Yan asked in confusion. Qin Gu smiled without saying a word, and immediately went from a faint smile just now to opening the book with no expression on her face. Yu Yan now only felt a gust of wind blowing by, making her shiver coldly Jingchen beside him saw everything, and with his mouth raised, he flipped through his book and listened attentively to the teacher's retelling on the podium. Qingyang University the boy picked up his phone and didn't know what he was calling. Xie Wan walked over from the grass, what was he doing? He held his hand and smiled. The boy turned off his phone and looked at the girl. Today, she looked like she was in her first love in a white dress, and the boy smiled and hugged her. 
It's not a big deal, it's not like graduation is coming soon. The School Enterprise Cooperation Unit invited me to go and see the place where I work. Oh, I thought some pretty girl called you when you were so nervous. How? How could it be that the boy wasn't looking at her, hugging her, I just like you, Wanna? Is that right? Then you give me a kiss, and Xia Wan leaned in. The boy kissed her directly, and Xia Wan hugged her tightly. One minute later. I believe you won't let me down. When we graduate, should we get married? Ah, so early, isn't it that I don't want to? I actually really want to, isn't it too early? And your family is also a noble family and will not agree. You want to marry me, not them. I don't need these things, as long as you love me. Isn't it okay to get married as soon as we graduate? Xie Wan lay on his shoulder with a smile on her face. The boy's smile gradually calmed down, and his eyes became sharp as he clenched his fists. In another corner of the school, a boy dressed in gorgeous clothes stood behind a tree and patted the person next to him. Hey, smoke. Take it out quickly. I can only smoke at school now. You can't be filial to me. The boy next to him smiled and said, Give it all to you. Brother, this is the last time. I dare not steal my dad's cigarette, otherwise you won't see me next time. If you catch me, I really won't be able to get out. Okay, brother, thank you for the last gesture the two of them walked out laughing for a while, and the boy hooked him. Look at this campus, either the boy hooked the girl or the girl hooked the boy. Isn't this a normal pattern? Look over there, the boy points across the bridge and holds a man and a woman together. Look how much this girl likes that boy, they are all stuck together. Xie Jingchen saw him pointing at the other side, only feeling familiar with his eyes. He glanced at him without thinking much, and smiled at him, saying, I'm afraid that boy doesn't like him at all. That kind of girl's wishful thinking can do anything. Let's go back. Okay, the two of them walked into the teaching building holding hands. Perhaps several years later, Xie Jingchen realized that what was in front of him was whether his sister would cry and tell her not to willingly fall. Chapter 6 Li Family you are listening at NovelFull.audio. After class in the evening, Xia Yuyan walked to the original desk and put the books she had to carry all day into her backpack. She picked them up and was about to leave, just about to lift her foot, let's go sing on Sunday, Li Jingchen. Qin Gu happens to be here, and she's in a bad mood these days. How about we accompany her to relax? Li Jingchen stood up and carried his backpack on his back. Whatever, remember to finish your homework. Don't tell me on Monday that you haven't finished it. Oh, I'll go to your house to write today. You supervise me, so I'll finish writing. How about killing two birds with one stone? Xie Yuyan walked up to him and grabbed his arm. Great God, saving a person's life is better than building a level 7 pagoda. You won't just die without saving it, right? Brother Jingchen the man looked at the girl next to him, facing her with no choice but to say no, and his hand was slowly pulled out by her. The girl held his hand and saw that Li Jingchen was not speaking, so she pretended to agree and pulled him away. Auntie has been cooking you a lot of delicious food lately. I envy your mother the most. Now I can finally get something delicious. I see you don't want to do homework, you want to eat delicious food. No, you can't have both fish and bear's paws. I want both. It's not my style to take a spoonful of three thousand weak waters to drink. Xie Yuyan smiled and looked at the car picking up Li Jingchen outside, then looked at her servant walking over and said, Uncle Han, I won't go back today. I'll just tell my mom that I'll go to Li Jingchen's house to make up for one night and go back tomorrow. After speaking, she turned her head and walked to the front of Li Jingchen's car. The passenger seat was empty and she was about to sit in. The butler quickly said, Miss Yuyen, why don't you sit in the back? It's comfortable in the back. Oh, then I, sitting in the back, opening the back door and sitting inside, I saw Li Jingchen lying in a comfortable seat asleep. 
I fell asleep so quickly, and the car started driving she didn't speak but looked at him, getting close to him. Li Jingchen. Her eyelashes felt longer than mine, and she needed to get closer with gestures, so close. He was actually quite good dot looking, but too cold and inhumane. The man's eyebrows furrowed lightly, as if he could feel it, as if he woke up with a slight movement. Her hands held tightly, and after looking for a while, Yu Yan twisted to her seat and lay down to sleep. Li Jingchen opened her eyes and took out the pillow behind her head, hugged her chest, and smiled at her. All of this was witnessed by the driver. Li Manchin the driver got off the car and opened the car door for him, but the girl didn't wake up. Young master. Li Jingchen pulled the pillow hard and saw that the girl didn't move at all. Approaching her. Yu Yin. Xie Yu Yin saw that she still didn't move, got up and got off the car, walked to the other side, opened the car door, and picked her up. All right, you can leave work now. All right, young master, be careful, Li Jingchen hummed and walked out. The driver saw him get on the car after leaving, and upon closer inspection, it was quite suitable. Li Jingchen walked step by step with the girl in his arms, and as he approached, he could smell the faint scent of jasmine, sweet and clear. As he approached the house, the butler opened the door and saw the girl in the young master's arms returning. Um, could you please help me put my backpack up? First O. Oh. The good butler understood at a glance and took the things from his hand and walked upstairs Li Jingchen gently placed Xie Yuyan, who was sleeping soundly in her arms, on the sofa, glanced at her, saying she came to sleep for homework, smiled, and walked upstairs. Li Mama, who was descending the stairs, was holding a cup of bitter gourd water for beauty and beauty. She closed her eyes and finished drinking it. As soon as she walked to the coffee table, she saw the girl lying on the sofa, taking a closer look. Yu Yin. Where is Li Jingchen? The butler replied. The young master probably went to take a shower, and just now he was holding Miss Yu Yin. This stinky kid's obsession with cleanliness has come to Yu Yin. How nice the little girl is. Li Mama pursed her lips. The butler smiled and said to Li Mama, at least he brought the person back. The young master never played with anyone before, so it would be nice to have one more person. Yeah, look at this sleeping thing. Speaking, Li Mama looked at the girl sleeping soundly and stepped forward to touch her. Why don't I have the energy of her mother? She almost lost half of her life giving birth to Li Jingchen, and her mother gave birth to four. Most importantly, they are all pretty. The butler smiled and shook his head, saying, Madam, having too many children is also very troublesome. I don't think so. Giving birth to such a little girl wouldn't bother you. It's so happy to wander around in front of you every day, unlike my son who doesn't even have a smiling face when he comes home and only knows how to find his father. He's serious, cold-faced, and has a paralyzed face, which makes him angry. Where am I? Xia Yuyan opened her eyes and saw Li Mama's eyes carefully scrutinizing her. She looked at the table and said, Ah. Auntie. Li, Jingchen. Oh, upstairs, is Yuyan staying for dinner today? Auntie will cook delicious food for you. Okay, Auntie, but I have to go find Li Jingchen to do my homework, otherwise I won't be able to play on the weekend. After finishing, I got up and ran upstairs with a smile on my face. During the run, Yu Yen recalled I was sleeping in the car, why was I just lying on the sofa? Who hugged me? I couldn't remember anything, so I frantically knocked on my head. You are already foolish to knock your head like that, don't knock foolishly. Yu Yen watched as Li Jingchen walked over. He had just taken a shower, and his slightly wet hair fell onto his shirt, making him look particularly youthful. Xie Yuyan was a bit dazed and approached him. Just came back and took a shower. Young man, are you going to see anyone? What are you saying, thank you? Yuyan, please stay away from me and go get your notebook. Isn't it necessary to do homework? Li Jingchen clenched his fist and turned his head to sit on a chair in the study. Xie Yuyan, who was standing still, 
smiled and sat next to him. It was still the scent of jasmine. Do you? Like jasmine? Don't you like it? Take out the book. Stop talking. Oh, as she couldn't get the answer, she had to give up and took out a book to write down everything she knew. Firstly Jingchen looked at her and saw that she started writing seriously. Although Xia Yuyan likes to play, she always takes things that need to be taken seriously seriously. He watched her finish what she knew, and then watched her take out all the other assignments and write them very seriously. He turned his head and was busy with his own affairs. After a while, Li Mama came in and placed fruits on the table for them, looking at Yu Yen with a smile on her face. It seems that Yu Yen looked up from behind and met Li Mama's eyes. Auntie, how can I trouble you? I'll just go down and take it. It's okay, there's not much distance. We'll have dinner later, stay and eat. Well, Auntie, you're so kind. Auntie, let's go down and study. As Auntie left, Xia Yuyan picked up a cut fruit and stuffed it into her mouth, smiling as she chewed on the sweet apple to be honest, Auntie's enthusiasm is a bit unrealistic, unlike my mother, but you are an only child and must be very happy. Uncle and Auntie must love you very much. After finishing, hurry up and write, I have finished writing, but I still need the help of the university bully to point out my mistakes, and then I will leave. The university bully is in trouble. After speaking, Xia Yuyan pushed the notebook over to him and moved the chair to him. Taking Xia Yuyan's homework book, Li Jingchen quickly helped him explain the wrong questions and correct them. Xia Yuyan put the book in her backpack and returned to her seat. What are you still sitting here for? Li Jingchen asked suspiciously. Oh, Li Jingchen, your eyelashes are really longer than mine. I was about to take her hand and touch his eyelashes, but it was blocked by one hand. Once it's done, let's go down. I have some things to deal with and I'll handle them later, oh, she broke his hand, moved the chair to another place, picked up her backpack, and walked out. What's so fierce? Let's just leave. After she finished speaking, she walked out and walked to the hall. Xia Yuyan didn't even blink when she saw the dishes on the table. She was a bit angry just now and has forgotten everything. She sat down in her seat and thought to herself, Li Jingchen is so happy to have such a virtuous mother that she still doesn't cherish. Seeing Li Mama walk out of the kitchen, I have finished writing for Auntie. Why hasn't Uncle come back oh, don't worry about him. He's at work, why hasn't Jingchen come with you? Li Jingchen. Ah, he doesn't know what he's busy with. Bombing me down he dares to bully you, should Auntie help you? It's okay, you're joking. Actually. He's pretty good. Yu Yen smiled and looked at the ant carefully. Auntie, your figure is really good. My mother has a small belly now, but she needs to learn from you. My physique is also not good, I am not as good as your mother. Oh, then you need to eat more to nourish your body and have your uncle buy you more delicious food without worrying about gaining weight. Well, does Yu Yen drink water? I'll pour it for you. It's been a long time since I last saw you, and Auntie still misses you quite a bit. Well, I also really miss Auntie, the two of them chatted for a while, and after a while, Li Jingchen went downstairs and saw both of them sitting in their seats. Xia Yuyan saw him come and sat next to Li Mama. Li Mama uncle didn't come back today to hold and accompany you, so he came and sat next to you, saying, pick up a cup. Replace wine with water, and let's go. After speaking, she drank it all in one gulp. Li Ma smiled and agreed with her Li Jingchen, who was sitting across from her, glanced at her and ate the dishes Li Mama saw that neither of them spoke and spoke up. Where are you going to play on the weekend, Yuyan? Auntie, we are planning to take a little song to relax, but she is not in a very good mood, oh, it's time to go. Her brother. Something happened, she must be feeling uncomfortable. It's not easy for the little girl to get through, and her brother left a child behind. Who did she hand over that child to now? When it comes to Xiaoga's older brother's girlfriend, I get angry. 
In the year before his brother had an accident, her ex-girlfriend suddenly inexplicably told him that they still have a child between them. It's great to raise and get married together. Unexpectedly, the next day that girlfriend threw that child into Xiaoga's house, saying it was for the future. Who are you talking about since Xiaoga's older brother is not married yet, don't touch him. Otherwise, there will be constant trouble. Xiaoga is planning to take her abroad to study, but she has limited energy alone. How could she possibly care about that child, and it's also inconvenient. She's really anxious. That can be left at my parents' house or maybe Xiaoga's parents wash their faces with tears every day, and her aunt's energy is limited. Guan Yui is already very anxious, which is really annoying. When she brings it up, she gets angry. Auntie, I have to go back, I'll send you no need, I called a car and it's almost here now. See you tomorrow at that time. After finishing speaking, I left. Hey, if you don't go to deliver, she said you won't go. You can't catch up with her like this. I have a sense of propriety Li Mama sighed, every family has a difficult lesson to read. I can't control you, so I carried a plate into the kitchen. Li Jingchen stayed in his seat for a long time before returning. Chapter 7 Life You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xie Yuan in the bathroom, Xie Yuan was brushing her teeth in her pajamas, rinsing her mouth, and returning to the room. She picked a dress from the wardrobe and put on a beautiful makeup. Well, today's makeup is pretty good. After saying that, I saw my little sister running around downstairs. What are you doing, Xie Shui? It's okay, I have to come in first. I'm happy. Oh, then you can play at the hospital. Don't wait at home for dad to come and talk about you again. Oh, good second sister. After finishing speaking, Xie Shui ran out. Xie Yuyan shook her head and saw that the older sister was wearing a red dress today, wearing high heels and carrying a branded bag. She looked in the mirror and went downstairs. She followed her up. Sister, what are you going to do? You look good in this Yuyan, I'm going to pursue happiness. When I bring you a brother dot in dot law, remember not to tell my mother yet. After leaving, Yuyin watched as the older sister walked out the door and became confused. I don't know when the older sister will have a boyfriend. She thought to herself that her phone rang, and it was Li Jingchen who called to connect. She looked at the time, and Li Jingchen went to the place to talk. I'm ready to leave get in the car and say to the driver, let's go. After arriving at the location, she walked down and instructed the driver. As she walked to the door, she saw Qin Gu standing upright in a black shirt and pants. However, after thinking about it, she was wearing a filial piety and walked over to take a photo of her. Xiao Ge, you're here, Li Jingchen. She went to buy things. Oh, no need to wait. Let's go into the private room first, then hold her hand and enter the room to open the screen. Little song, which song do you want to sing? I'll give you some. No need, I'll have some water first. Oh okay, let me sing an English song first. I started singing with the microphone in my hand. Qin Gu sat next to her and looked at her with eyes drawn away, no one knew what she was really thinking. Li Jingchen came back from shopping and saw Yu Yan singing with a microphone. Today, she was wearing a floral dress and comfortable sandals on her feet. She walked in and put down her things. After a while, Yu Yan couldn't sing anymore. She sat down and looked at Li Jingchen. She lay down next to Qin Gu and took a sip of water. Yu Yan, why don't you sing? This is our last carnival here, sing quickly. I, I really can't sing it, I'm sorry Qin Gu lowered her head. Li Jingchen, Yu Yan gestured. Turning her head, Yu Yan looked at her. It's okay, Xiao singing won't come out. Let's go let's relax, okay? Pat her head and hold her thin back. Yu Yan, don't think too much. You won't be able to bear this anymore. Is there any place to relax on top of Li Jingchen? I went to ask, and then Li Jingchen walked out. 
Xiaoga, I really want to help you. I even want to bear the pain for you. Although I don't understand this feeling, I, you can try crying. It's much better when you cry. Qin Gu lay on her shoulder, suppressing herself, and rationally told her that she can't cry. After a while, Li Jingchen walked in and led them up to the top floor. Oh, not to mention, the top floor was quite beautiful. Yu Yin supported Qin Gu and looked at the buildings and scenery below. Qin Gu, you close your eyes and try to let go of all those unhappy things. Once today is over, tomorrow will definitely be better. Let's think about the future and lie on the wall. Wow, this is so high, is Xia Yuyan not afraid of falling when she comes back? It's okay, Li Jingchen. Being happy is the most important thing. Qin Gu, follow me and try it out. Maybe it's really what I said. Remember to leave a smile Qin Gu slowly relaxed from her previously reserved demeanor according to Yu Yan's words, and her footsteps relaxed. Next to her, Yu Yan let go of the song and held her hand, confident and full of confidence like the dance we danced together when we graduated from junior high school. Although I didn't dance well, I knew you could definitely top the charts. Xiao Gu believed me. After speaking, Qin Gu was slowly held by her hand and followed her movement step by step. Her smile unconsciously fell on the corner of her mouth, and with each step, Qin Gu slowly became faster. Yu Yan stopped to appreciate the graceful dance posture of Qin Gu. Unfortunately, such a dance may be in the future. I can't even watch it anymore. Why because in the future, Qin Gu may not be able to choose dance as his brother's favorite sport. I don't think so. Not everyone can meet Jing Hong's dance, you've only seen her twice. Yeah, Li Jingchen. If something had happened to my family in Qin Gu, I wouldn't have been much better either. What nonsense. The situation is different, why are you still cursing your family? Make an assumption no hypothesis, Li Jingchen. Do you want to die? Yu Yin grabbed her waist and was about to go over and hit him, but he dodged accurately. Muse, there's actually no need to run out, come up and breathe some air. Dad and these leaders are too selfish. When I take over, I have to continue to check the situation. My subordinates watch as the young master's eyebrows twitch and turn their heads to see the girl in black standing in the middle dancing. Young master, it seems that I have seen that girl somewhere before Muse looked over and looked at the girl. Today she is particularly confident, dazzling, and charming. Although she is still young, standing on stage like that is not enough to attract people. You go down, I'm taking a breath after jumping for a while, Qin Gu took a breath. Yes, Yu Yin was right, confidence is very important, I can't continue like this anymore. Qin Gu looked at Li Jingchen and Yu Yin not far away and smiled my skin is itchy, Yu Li Jingchen ah. Raven, didn't you say you love me the most? Who is she? The girl held his phone in her hand and looked at him with a helpless expression, asking him, but he couldn't answer her a word Xia Wan looked at him with tears in her eyes. Did you stop loving me? Didn't you agree to get married? Last week, you promised me to get married. Today, I put on beautiful makeup and even took out my household registration book secretly. Are you right about me, Raven Chin Go listened to a voice not far away and walked up to the two of them. Is this voice your sister? Sister. Not my sister. She told me she was going on a date today, how could she be here? With a bewildered expression, Xia Yuyan slowly followed Li Jingchen's hand and Qin Ji's hand behind them, listening to their conversation. Once again, it was confirmed that the girl who was about to reach the edge was her sister. Today, my older sister was wearing a red dress and high heels, which were still limited edition shoes she had finally mailed back from abroad. At this moment, she was standing on stage questioning the man, but he didn't say a word. Let's break up, maybe we still don't understand emotions, that's it. The man's resolute departure leave only Xia Wan, not even the phone anymore. Since that's the case, then let's go down together. Let's go. 
The girl walked to the edge with her eyes closed. Sister. Do you want us anymore, Xie Wan? Xie Yuyan's legs are weak and she has to be supported by two people. Looking at her own sister, tears have already flowed down her face. Yuyan. Tell her mother that I'm sorry for her, you have a cruel heart. You're so right. Mom is pregnant in October. Yu Qin Gu slowly let go of her and gestured for Li Jingchen to help her. She walked slowly to the side and got closer to her. Mu Zhe walked over and grabbed her. I'll come, boys have better strength than girls. I'll go over. After speaking, Qin Gu slowly walked. Qin Gu looked at Mu Zhe's back and couldn't help but feel a little lost. Xie Wan noticed that the man had walked over. Don't come over. When she came over, I, Xia Wan closed her eyes and smiled before jumping down. Mu Zhe was about to grab her, but she threw herself into the air but saw. Qin Gu had already climbed up the stairs, and Xia Yuyan looked at her and said. Xiao Gu, you're afraid of heights, Li Jingchen. You quickly pulled her down Qin Gu slowly walked over and hugged her. Xia Wan, you still have many people to protect. Without him, would you be unable to live? Xia Wan couldn't even hear what everyone was saying to her now, struggling with Qin Gu. Mu Zhe walked up next to her, relaxed her mind, and Qin Gu persisted for a while. Watching Mu Zhe approaching, Qin Gu pushed her to a place close to Xia Yuyan's steps as the stone slid down from the middle. She let go of her hand, closed her eyes. Qin Gu, what are you doing? I don't want. Xia Yuyan shouted, and Xia Wan, who had fallen, was held down by Li Jingchen. Mu Zhe ran over and lay down on the steps, holding Qin Ji's hands in both hands. Li Jingchen, is that right? I just contacted them, and they should be arriving soon. You go help control the field, otherwise there will be more people watching below. After that, Li Jingchen let go of Xia Yuyan and ran down. Xia Yuyan, you pulled your sister to lay her flat, maintaining equality with the ambulance. Yu Yan worked hard to move her sister's body, holding her down and watching Jiang Mu Zhe pull Qin Gu. Qin. Gu. But do you know that this world is really big? You don't even know how big she is. I used to dislike this world, but since things have happened, don't be disappointed in this world. I know about your brother's situation. I am proud of having such a brave and fearless person for you, and I feel regretful about it. But no matter what, please trust them, and I am full of hope to overcome everything. Everything will be okay. Let go. You can't save me. One or two of us will die. I made a judgment that it's not high below. No nonsense, you, I won't die. I'm your savior, and I'll be safe this time too. Trust me Qin Gu looked up at the sweat on the man's face, her eyes full of confidence, but she knew that no matter who was in such a situation, there was fear. Just like her brother said that everyone has fear, but the person who risked their life to save you in the face of danger must be a good person and cherish it, because regardless of whether you have a relationship or not, in his eyes, he must want to save you. Apart from danger, Perhaps he should not be afraid, but should be grateful that he is also protected. The rescue team quickly set up equipment and climbed up the high wall in front of the two of them. Muse put on the equipment and slowly let go of it. Let me take her down, and the two of the rescue team looked at each other. Okay, then I'll tighten her waist a bit, slow down, and we'll go too. Muse took her slowly down the rope and looked up at her. The girl was already asleep holding her onto the ambulance stretcher and sitting in the next seat. The doctor next to him looked at the man with blood on his chest, but she was just scared. You should be quite serious. Oh, it's okay, my little injury. I'll go back and bandage it. After that, I'll smile and hold the girl's hand. Hospital Xia Wan's room the doctor came out and said to Xia's parents. It's okay to have a rib fracture, just take care of it, but taking any medication for mental illness is of no use. The doctor sighed and walked out. 
When it comes to mental illness, I see that her skin is itching and she feels like she has grown up and doesn't care about anything. You just know how to get used to her, Xia Fu said angrily. Yes, yes, you're right. If it weren't for Xiao Ge, we wouldn't have really seen Xiao Wan. Looking at Yu Yan sitting next to her, she walked over and said to Li Jingchen, Jingchen, could you please take Yen er back? She's been quite frightened, so let's go to her room and rest. Let's keep watch. Oh okay, auntie, then let's go. After finishing speaking, we'll help Yu Yan walk outside. Xie Mama sighed and didn't know what impact it would have on Yu Yan in the future, after all, the child's health is the most important family members can go in to visit now. Upon hearing the nurse's words, Xie's mother pulled Xie's father and walked in, watching her own girl sitting on the hospital bed with a lifeless expression on her face. Xiao Wan. Do you understand what I'm saying? Xie Wan hummed and remained silent. Qin Gu, who was standing outside, woke up and looked at Xia Wan on the hospital bed for the first time. She turned her head and walked over. After asking the nurse, she saw Jiang Mu's parents standing at the door. As she approached, she saw the doctor inside dressing his wound, confirming that he had nothing wrong. Just as she was about to turn her head, Zhang's father saw her. Qin. Gu. Is she coming to see Mu's? He. It's okay, I should go now. Turn around and leave. Inside, Muse just finished dressing his wound and heard a sound coming out from outside. What happened just now? Hey, this Qin Gu is just like her mother when she was young. She must have grown up to be a beautiful girl, and now she's also beautiful, okay? I'm talking to you too, why are you two so indifferent to your son's safety? I'm so sad, did Qin Gu come to see me just now? What did she say? Oh, she asked if you were okay, and then she left, let's go. Then I'll go out for a while, finish speaking, and run out. Watching her own son run out, Zhang's mother said, Hey, my son is wearing a piece of clothing and walking. When Mu Zhe ran outside, he saw Qin Gu crying while holding her parents, and Qin's father looked lifeless with a crying expression on his face. Qin Gu, let's go home, okay? Well, Qin Gu answered. As my parents got into the car, the car drove away. Outside, Jiang Mius watched as the car drove away from him with a smile on his face. See you next time, little girl, Xia Yuan Li Jingchen helped Yu Yan onto the bed, took off her shoes, asked Xia Shui to pour her a glass of water, patted her back. It's okay. Just take a nap. Xia Yu Yan, who drank the water, grabbed Li Jingchen and said, How is Xiao Ge doing? She's okay, she's already gone back with her family. Can I accompany you to see her tomorrow when she wakes up? Well, Li Jingchen, I'm afraid. Can I hold your hand and sleep well? Okay, go to bed now. Li Jingchen sat at the bedside, letting Xia Yuyan pull her, and Xia Yuyan, who was sleeping soundly, didn't have any free time. It seemed like a nightmare kept saying, Sister, little. Song. No, leaving. I, Li Jingchen patted her and waited for a day. After a while, she didn't say a word, but his hand couldn't be pulled out no matter how hard he tried. Feeling numb, he couldn't help but endure it. Xie Shui shook her head. This was a sign of some kind of wrongdoing. Isn't it like she was abusing a dog? Huh, let's go to sleep. After finishing speaking, I went downstairs and went to my own room to sleep. Chapter 8 Sure ran. You are listening at NovelFull.audio The next morning, Li Jingchen of the Xie family stuffed Yu Yan's hand into the blanket, making sure she wasn't moving around. He walked out the door gently and went downstairs. Xie Jingchen had just returned from the house when he bumped into him. Li Jingchen, why were you at my house in the middle of the night Yu Yan has fallen asleep, don't make any noise. You will know the situation in the morning. I'll leave first. Your parents are both asleep in the room, so don't make any noise. Ah. What does that mean? Xie Jingchen asked in reverse. 
just watching Li Jingchen leave like this. He had no choice but to tiptoe into the room, cover himself up, and fall asleep. Li Jingchen yawned as he walked out, walked into the car, closed his eyes, rubbed his temples, and the car left Xia Yuan early morning Qin Garden the stern and kind grandfather looked at the girl upstairs who had not yet stood up, walked out the door, and sat down downstairs. Xiao. Gu, let's go abroad soon. It's better to let the child go out to relax. Did Xiao Su sleep? Where are you going to take the pastry? Grandfather Xiao Ge is going to take Xiao Su with him. Qin Yui said. Nonsense, she's still a child herself dad, we will come up with a win-win -win solution, um grandfather, please let me. Take Xiao Su with me. Qin Gu came down from upstairs, wearing thin pajamas and looking at everyone with weak eyes. Qin Yui quickly went over and helped her sit down. Xiao Ge, can you handle it this way? She's just a child, and you have to take care of your studies. Grandpa, I can do it, so let me take care of her. My parents still have research to do, and I know I can't spare time. Moreover, as long as I have a reasonable time arrangement after class, I can spare some time. And didn't you also arrange a nanny for me? She was personally designated by you and said Qin Gu with confidence. She walked over to my grandfather and leaned against him okay. Then you must pay attention to your health. Safety is the most important thing. When I come back, I don't want to see a very disappointing little song. After speaking, I'm filming the Qin song. I can't resist you. Remember the video when you go there. Okay Qin Yui looked at the two of them. Sob. Cousin. You also need to remember to call me. If you want a video every day, I have to watch you every day. After speaking, I will sit next to Qin Gu and hold her. The Qin parents next to them, along with Qin Ji's parents, stood by and watched as tears fell from the faces of the three of them, and they were desperately trying to hold them back, laughing cousin, I need to improve my grades even if I'm not here, but when I come back, I have to test it all, I can't surpass you, let's change my cousin. No, cousin oh my, my grandfather knew he was bullying me when he saw my cousin. He smiled and knocked on Yui's head, saying, What are you all thinking, you little brat? Learn more from your cousin, otherwise you'll have no pocket money left. What, even you fell into trouble, you joined forces and ignored you. After saying that, Qin Yui pinched her waist and walked away. The living room was filled with smiles, watching the disheveled Qin Yui return from behind. By the way, today the governor is coming to visit. We need to go back and change into clothes. I'll help you go back to your room, Xiao Gu. If you don't want to come out, you don't need to come out. Okay. Qin Gu answered and was helped upstairs by her mother. She heard footsteps outside gradually fading away, and her mother closed the door and walked out. Qin Gu walked into the wardrobe and changed into clothes I chose a light-colored floral dress from the wardrobe, and when I put it on, I didn't open the door and saw people sitting together outside. It was obvious that I didn't see Jiang Mio's, but my family was chatting happily with his parents Qin Gu walked out of the courtyard through the back door and saw her cousin talking to a man with a strange figure, what, you asked me to call my cousin out. Do you have anything to do with her? Aren't you my brother's friend? What's the matter with my cousin? Yui looked at the man in front of her in confusion. I can be said to be your cousin's lifesaver, weren't you there that day? Yui Fu Yi thought for a moment and said, my cousin's rescue. The benefactor, when did it happen? Oh, I remember. I was at Qin's house, but I helped him, and it's hard to distinguish between enemies and friends. After thinking about it, I decided not to help you because my cousin wouldn't see you like you, so goodbye. After speaking, I have to leave. The man reached out and grabbed her. If you don't call her out today, I'll keep holding on to you. You. Why is this man like this? Yui struggled with the man's hand with a helpless expression on her face. Come on, tell me why she doesn't want to see me what are you two doing? Jiang Mius, let go of my cousin. 
Qin Gu walked over and said to him. Yu Yi saw Qin Gu walk over and step on Jiang Mio's, running behind Qin Gu. Cousin, this person is really inexplicable. He wants me to call you, but I can't let him succeed cousin, come into the room. I'll go back later. Yu Yi saw the two of them run back to the villa. Let's go, this girl is quite strong. Qin Gu took a step back and the man took her hand and said, that's how I treated your life. Saving benefactor. I saved you twice. Last time I came to see why I didn't come in. I didn't say I wanted to see you, are you feeling well? All right, as I spoke, I pulled her to the eaves of the courtyard. Have you ever been here before? He looked at the Qin Song. I've been here. Last time. It's been a long time. Qin Gu was pulled up and squatted down by him, and Mu Zhe took off his coat and threw it onto the ground. Gesturing for her to sit down. Why are you looking for me? Qin Gu asked. I want to talk to you. I used to be in the military and had some interaction with your brother. He is indeed a very good soldier. Many people have said so. He is very good. But being good is not of much use. For me, no matter how beautiful he is outside, even if he falls behind, he is still my brother. Now that I have figured it out, I will not do anything before, and I will never look at him after speaking. Muse looked at the girl with her pure eyes fixed on him Muse looked at her and said, I've figured it out. It's a good thing, but there's something I want to ask you. Do you hate me? Even that girl is saying you hate me. No, there is always a smile on a person's face that makes them uncomfortable, that's all. Laugh, what's wrong with my smile? Is there a hidden weapon in my smile? All right, I won't say it anymore. When I was a child, I didn't actually smile until my mother left me completely. I didn't show my true nature anymore. Sometimes others tell me that I feel uncomfortable like this. But that's okay. If others don't understand me, I can understand it myself, and I don't need others to understand sorry. That aunt and your father it's okay, auntie and dad really love each other. They only got together five years after my mother left. I don't care about these things. My dad is very strict and serious with me, so sometimes this kind of relationship doesn't need to be expressed. He also loves me very much. Everyone has their own ideas, I can understand my mother used to love to laugh, and others told her the same way. But my mother said that my father likes her smile, so no matter what happens, we must face life with a smile. Now I'm giving this sentence to you, Qin Gu. Thank you for me, auntie. Qin Gu is watching Mu Zhe. Muse looked at the girl. So, are you and I friends now? Qin Gu looked up at the man in front of him, do you lack friends? Lack, especially. Lack of girlfriend. I mean female friends. Of course, you can rest assured that I won't laugh at you for no reason. In the future, I will try not to smile in front of you well, hello friend. Qin Gu extended a hand and Mu Zhe watched as she held onto her hand one after another, and the two of them smiled at each other. Xie family Xie Yuyan woke up and went to see her sister. She stood at the door of her sister's room, and her mother sat by Xie Wan's bed feeding her food. Xie Wan watched as her mother's tears kept flowing. Mom, I want to go abroad. Isn't it good to just stay at home? Xiao Wan, we look at you, like this mom, let me go. Xie Wan looked at her disheveled appearance. What face is there in this house? Since the decision has been made, then. Let's go. Xie Mama put down her bowl and walked out, looking at Yu Yen. Sister. Mom Yu Yen, shall we go up? Xie Yu Yen ran away from the hospital and sat on the flower room swing. After a long silence, I dialed the phone and saw the voice of Li Jingchen across from me. She cried when she heard it. Li Jingchen. I was so scared. Can you come pick me up? Where is it? I'll go pick you up. My flower house okay, after finishing speaking, 
Li Jingchen hung up the phone and comforted Yu Yan. She walked out of the room, got in the car, and went straight to Xie Garden. As she walked in, she opened the flower room door and saw the girl squatting on the ground crying. Yu Yen. I'm here, come with me, and she said she reached out her hand. Yu Yen saw a hand reach out and she grabbed him, but she couldn't get up. Li Jingchen. I, crouched numbly Li Jingchen raised his eyes, picked her up horizontally, and went to my house well, I'm not in a good mood right now, I can go anywhere. Li Jingchen picked her up and sat in the car, watching the girl's eyes turn red as she had just cried. I took out a tissue from behind to wipe her tears. I cried yesterday, but why did I cry again today? I've thought about it, Li Jingchen. I want to eat until I taste good and vomit. Xie Wan, I won't talk to her anymore. I cried to death yesterday and didn't say a word to me. I really can't do it. I need to go see Qin Gu. Li Jingchen, why don't you turn around and accompany me aren't you going to my house? Why are you going to watch Qin songs again? I suddenly remembered, what's wrong with you? Come with me, Li Jingchen oh, let's go then, Li Jingchen hummed and asked the driver to turn around and drive to Qin's house. Chapter 9 Leaving You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. 2020 was a rainy and cloudy day, and Yu Yen was writing a diary at her desk. Today is a cloudy day, my sister has just left, and I am about to leave. Many things have happened this year, and I feel a bit strange. I never thought about these things before, but now I have an indescribable feeling, a suffocation. And a very complicated problem. For a moment, I really understood the mood of Qin Gu. That mood cannot be expressed in words, and can only be slowly accepted or diluted through time. Yu Yen put down her pen and closed the book. Pack up the things that need to leave tomorrow in the room. My little sister walked over early in the morning and gave her toy to her. She said, I don't need the toy anymore because I'm so big. Thank you for coming back and bringing you a gift. She smiled and pinched her cheek. Where's my brother? Yu Yen asked Xia Shui shook her head. Forget it, go down and help mom. I pulled my little sister downstairs and saw dad sitting on the sofa with a newspaper, while mom was picking up bean sprouts. She smiled and walked up to mom to help her with the work. After tidying up, mom asked. Well, it's almost done. Yu Yen looked at her and said, Mom, you already have wrinkles. Go shopping with friends more and buy some good things. Don't be careless about yourself. Okay, mom remembers. Mom smiled slightly and watched as she patted her head. Father stood up and walked up to Rain Yen, taking out something in his hand. Clearly a beautiful brooch Yenner is going so far away to take care of herself. How did you take out the brooch? Xie Mama exclaimed in surprise, and Yu Yen looked at the two of them with doubts in their eyes and said, Is this your love token? On the contrary, it's not that your mother wanted to give it to another man. By chance, she gave it to me, my father said seriously. Oh, that's quite regrettable. Dad, sometimes you smile, maybe that guy back then was you. Yu Yen smiled and looked at her father. Dad turned around and left, went out to deal with things, so he didn't have dinner anymore. Yu Yen watched her father leave thoughtfully. In fact, my father had you in his heart, but there were too many unavoidable circumstances in that era. My father fell in love with my mother at first sight, and our families were still close friends. However, my mother liked the boy who grew up together because of him. She often argued with my grandfather, and even ran away from home. That time, my father and grandfather had to get married for business, but my mother insisted on being with that boy. It was because of the marriage that the only remaining good feelings between the two were lost, which made my mother hate him. But later on, she couldn't bear it, and with some problems, my mother still agreed to marry him. Father, after marriage, they treated each other with great respect until they gave birth to me. Their relationship only eased a lot, but we often see our father go to the study and never come out late at night. 
He is not an ordinary father, and my father bears the responsibility entrusted by the previous generation of grandfather. Therefore, his heart is not alone, but with the whole family in mind. Although serious, I usually think it is a strict teacher who leads to high school students. My mother dotes on us, and usually my father is not at home. It took several years for my father to return home frequently, later on, my older brother often didn't go home. I know he was afraid of his father, and he hasn't changed since then. Sia's mother pulled Schwer down to have dinner together, and each of them went to do their own business. Yuyen entered the study and put all the books she usually read in her backpack. As she walked out, she saw Xie Jingshen walking in and the two of them looking at each other with four eyes. He walked over and took out a book, saying, This is a book I borrowed from my classmate. They said it should be useful to you as it belongs to some famous person. Use it. Taking the book, Yu Yen looked at the nine big characters written at the top of the book, How is Steel Made? Brother, how is steel made? Didn't I read it in fifth grade? I really don't know if my brother's memory is short. After reading it, Yu Yin smiled and said thank you, brother. By the way, brother, I'm leaving. Remember to go home and spend more time with mom. You can't be busy all the time. You went to college and learned to be more sensible. Sister is already like that, so don't let mom be disappointed with you. Dad actually cares about you quite a bit. Besides, you will inherit your father's legacy in the future. Can you bear to let your father work hard for half a lifetime and ruin his achievements on you alone? Xie Yuyan asked him in reverse. I know now, sister. You've only been there for four years and it's not that you haven't come back yet. It's like reading a will, leaving without saying anything. After you finish speaking, you'll raise your eyebrows and leave. What will and what to say? Xie Yuyan was speechless and turned her head to the room to pack her luggage. Kind reminder to him that kindness was mistaken for donkey liver and lung. Did I say it wrong? The next morning at the airport a man and two women entered the airport one after another, and the Li family reminded Li Jingchen about the matter of going out and some questions Yu Yan walked into the airport, with her mother holding her hand and then parting to remind her got it, I've talked about it at home. Besides, my dad's friends are also there. They will tell my mom, don't worry, and hold her. Although I can't bear to part with you, the child will always go out for a walk when they grow up. Father and mother, goodbye. After saying goodbye, they bowed and the two of them shook their heads and said. This child. A white car got off next to her. Qin Gu got off the car, holding Xiao Su in her hand. Ji Fan walked over to Yu Yi, holding Qin Ji Yi's hand. Upon closer inspection, Yu Yi's eyes streamed with tears. Qin Gu took out a piece of paper to dry her, so don't cry anymore. Although I don't know when I'll be back, I should. Still be back. Don't worry, you promise to come back, cousin. Yu Yi looked at Qin Gu and Qin Gu said to Ji Fan, take care of her. I'll leave first, pull Yui and Xiao Su to the airport. Ji Fan took her hand and said let's go too. The process of pulling, however, couldn't move her at all. Uncle, do you think cousin will come back? How do I think she won't come back? Will she never come back to the city where she lost her brother? No she will come back, shall we go home? Ji Fan watched as she picked her up and walked out of the airport Qin Gu. Yu Yan saw off her parents and waved her hands to meet Li Jingchen. Hey Xiao Su, hello. Yu Yan waved her hands toward Xiao Su, so cute. You really brought her here, so cute. She reached out and pinched Xiao Su's cheek, and Xiao Su quickly dodged and hid behind Qin Gu afraid of me, Qin Gu let's go, it's time to register. After you finish, go wash your hands and just touch something and then touch the child. Qin Gu sneered. Alas, I didn't touch anything. It's good that you are clean. You are the boss, and it's up to you the final say. Where are you sitting? Li Jingchen Li Jingchen pointed and sat down, then looked at her seat. 
Ah, since I'm sitting across from you, where are you sitting? Qin Gu Qin Gu looked at the two people next to her, then adjusted her seat and carried Xiao Su inside to put her luggage. Yu Yan walked over and I came to help you, Xiao Gu. There wasn't much to eat, Yu Yan looked at Li Jingchen and said to him, Hey Li Jingchen, I suddenly remembered why you were so tall. Even though you weren't as tall as me when I was a child, I reached out a hand and gestured to Li Jingchen to grab her hand and put her luggage on it. Then, I also put Qin Ji's luggage on it and pulled her to the seat. Be quiet and tie her seat belt. Qin Gu also sat down and closed her eyes. Yu Yan hugged her chest and sat down, since Li Jingchen was holding me, he wouldn't let me talk, staring at him like this. After a while, she saw him lying down and sleeping, even leaning against him. Xiao Ge, she turned her head and saw Yu Yan patting Xiao Su, her sleepy eyes falling asleep. With her head sticking out, she sat back and adjusted her seat. She took out her phone and looked at the information about going to school. Financial International Was established After looking for a while, a female server came out next to her. She put water on her desk and used it slowly. She lifted her head and looked at the server in confusion. I didn't order it, right? The female server smiled and said, See Mississippi. You've been watching for a while now, and I brought it specifically for you. The computer has radiation, so don't overwork yourself thank you, she took a sip and smiled, sweet and delicious, just enough to quench her thirst. After seeing the waiter leave, she turned off her computer, lay down on the seat, closed her eyes. Chapter 10 Anger you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Li Jingchen distributed the keys to the two people at the entrance of a foreign hotel. After Qin Gu received the keys, I went up first Qin Gu, get a good night's sleep. Let's go play tomorrow. When we come out, we must figure out this place. Xia Yuyan looked at Li Jingchen. He didn't watch her pick up her luggage and left Li Jingchen. Yuyan dragged her luggage along towards the elevator. Li Jingchen and Qin Gu had already gone up. It's necessary to leave separately, let's see you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I still have to say goodbye to my parents. Opening the door and entering the room, pushing it open, Xia Yuyan, who was staying at the hotel for the first time, felt lethargic all over, perhaps lacking sleep. She walked in, took out her pajamas, went into the bathroom, took a shower, walked out, got into the blanket, turned off the lights, and went to sleep. She fell asleep. The phone in the backpack keeps buzzing and in another place, Li Jingchen returned to his room with headphones and searched for information. His phone clearly read Columbia University. The surroundings. A message came in on his phone that your little fairy had fallen asleep. After reading it, Li Jingchen raised his eyebrows slightly and smiled as he continued to look at the information. It wasn't until late at night that he put down his phone and entered the bathroom. Sleeping so early, it seemed like he was really tired. The next morning, Xia Yuyan got up early and chose a floral dress from the wardrobe, drew lipstick, and played a video with her family. On the screen, Xia Shua was about to put a cake on the screen and smiled at her, saying, Dad has been in the study these days and left early in the morning. Mom went out to chat with Li Jingchen's mother. Is there anything sister wants to convey? No need, by the way, pay more attention to your brother at home and remind your mother not to let her indulge him. You too. Oh, sister, you should study hard over there and come back. I'll wait for you here. Remember to bring me some delicious food, Xia Shue said with a smile to Xia Yuyan. Yuyan rolled her eyes. She's such a greedy little white-eyed wolf. Remember to help me water the flowers in the garden. Remember to remind you at home. Yes, I understand, sister. Instead of worrying about me, sister should dress up more and dress up herself, Xia Shue said what's wrong with me. She looks at herself with cherry lips and fair skin, and a floral dress. What's wrong with it? Sister, when she goes to college, she can't dress up well and be more beautiful, otherwise brother Jingchen will take a liking to others, after all, 
Brother Jingchen is so handsome he. Whether he's handsome or not has nothing to do with me. No matter how well he looks or doesn't like him, wouldn't that be the case? I wouldn't have to die for a man who doesn't love her like my sister did. For us now, education is important, and we'll talk about it in the future. I don't think about this for now. For emotions, Xia Yuyan doesn't know whether they can be mixed up. Let alone in the future, you as a child dare to teach me a lesson. Xia Shui remembers my words, okay, I have to go out. After the two of them finished talking, Xia Yuyan took out a very delicate box from her bag, which contained a brooch, and she played with it. The brooch looked thoughtful, and as she walked out, she saw Li Jingchen at the door. You got up so early, and she forgot that he has a habit of getting up early and running in the morning. Have you finished running and eaten yet? Oh, where are Xiaoga and the child? I haven't eaten yet. Let's go down, Qin Gu and the others are below Li Jingchen took her hand and two people walked into the elevator. Yu Yen looked at him. He was not the same today as before. He was a little mature, and I could smell a trace of Gulong perfume when I got close. It seemed that she leaned against him and patted her on the shoulder. Stand up. Oh, I can't stand straight either, Li Jingchen why, Li Jingchen is looking at her Xia Yuyan looked up and met his gaze. After four years of college, we had to study hard. Let's work together and strive to return to China as soon as possible. After saying that the elevator had started, she walked out and pulled him out. She saw Qin Gu and the child playing on the side, Auntie, this is very fun. Do you want to give it a try? The girl threw a pink ball towards the distance and asked her to pick it up. Qin Gu walked over and helped her pick it up. After playing for a while, Qin Gu walked over and said, Let's eat. No, Xiao Gu is playing once. Xiao Su still wants to play. Qin Gu looked at the girl and smiled happily at her. The last time, the two of them started playing again. Half a quarter of an hour later, Qin Gu carried the girl under the table. Yu Yin walked up to the dining table and looked at the delicious dishes on the table. There were fish, shrimp, and all kinds of dishes. Can we finish all these? After finishing speaking, she picked up her chopsticks and started eating. She took the first bite and felt like she was not feeling well. However, she still swallowed the first bite and looked at the three people next to her, who were eating the food expressionlessly. Although it was delicious, it was too cold. Move the stool to Qin Ji's side and ask her, is Xiaoga delicious? Qin Gu smiled slightly and said, it's okay, oh, should we live in the dormitory? It's my first time leaving home. What's the feeling of living in the dormitory? She looked at Qin Gu. I have a house here, and we can move there. It's very close to the school, said Li Jingchen. I'm tired of living in the villa, let's just stay in the dormitory. Qin Gu, Yu Yan looks at Qin Gu let's temporarily stay in the house and move in the future. Let's go move things over first. Do you think so, Yu Yan? Qin Gu finished speaking and looked at Xiao Su. Oh, I forgot about Xiao Su. If Xiao Ge has anything to do, you can leave her to me. We can take turns talking to her and not forget to pat Xiao Su's head but now, we have to move things. By the way, Xiao Ge, does Xiao Su need to apply for kindergarten qualification? Well, I'm planning to officially enroll her in the park in a year, let her play now. Well, that's true. Let's play for the first half of the year. Li Jingchen, have you found any good things around here? There isn't much around, there's everything in the school. Our property manager has already moved everything over and will go back to pack it later. Now go fill out the enrollment registration form, and school will officially start tomorrow. I have already checked everything. The first day of school is definitely a big cleaning. We just need to go late and report in. If we want to meet new classmates in advance, we can go early. I plan to go late. Don't call me tomorrow. By the way, Li Jingchen, how many cars do you have at your house? Two cars, Li Jingchen raised his hand. 
Just two, okay then, let's go see if there are any fun places around first. A few people got on the car. When I got off the car, I saw several big characters carved neatly on a big stone from Columbia University. Xie Yuyan walked over and handed her phone to Li Jingchen. Li Jingchen helped me take a photo. I need to make a picture book to record my college life. You need to help me. Standing still in place, she posed, and Li Jingchen pressed and gave it to her. She followed Qin Gu and walked behind. When she received the phone, her expression was not very good. The girl who looked at the photo was swinging left and right, not a single one was good. Can this person take photos? It's better for me to take photos. After all, let's do some photos. Sure, Yu Yen sighed and ran to the side of the two of them, following the queue. She saw the long queue and saw a senior student in front of her who said that after receiving the name and class number, the students could sign their names and go back. Tomorrow, they could go to the class to report. The girl was dressed in luxurious attire, her face was covered in cosmetics, and her lipstick was the most popular rotten tomato color this year. She spoke fluent English. It was their turn, and Li Jingchen helped the two of them send out the paper. The senior sister glanced at him, I saw her gently speaking with him. Xie Yuyan looked over and walked up to Qin Gu. This person is still so attractive when he goes to college Qin Gu turned her head to look at Yu Yan and said, So you're jealous, who likes it? Xie Yuyan looked at Qin Gu with a look on her face, how do you know? Qin Gu smiled but remained silent. If you like it, just say it. Maybe he also likes you. You said Li Jingchen. I only want to study now and can't think about these things. These will only affect my studies. Let's talk about it after I graduate from university. I originally wanted to tell him when I went to college, but he didn't show any interest, even with a cold face. When I'm with him, I'm afraid he's trying to manipulate me, so there might be some variables. Xiaoga, did you bring your child here to let those people know that you are a mother with children and to keep them away from you? Xiaoga's plan is really good. When you go back to a city, everyone knows you are Xiao Su's mother. How would those elders talk about you? Have you ever thought about it? Xia Yuyan smiled and looked at Qin Gu, who said in a low voice, No matter what you say about love, even if you explain some things, it's useless. Now that Xiao Su is safe with me, we all know how they treat this child when they send it back, so not sending it back should be the safest thing for her, right? I don't know what I should do, but I must do it. Yu Yen, do you think my choice is right? Yu Yen patted Qin Ji's shoulder and said. Xiaoga, your choice must be the most correct. No matter what others say, I will help you. What are you two doing? Li Jingchen walked over and held Xiao Su in his hand. The two parted ways, and Yu Yen smiled and said, Ah, you finished filling it out. Let's go to the new house and have a look. Xiao Gu, let's sit together. Li Jingchen walked with Xiao Gu and Xiao Su, but was ignored and looked at the three people in front. Qin Gu helped Xiao Su into the car. Li Jingchen walked to Xia Yuyan, who was about to get on the car, and pulled her over. Li Jingchen, what are you doing? Xia Yuyan was puzzled and pulled aside. Li Jingchen looked at her and said, What am I doing? What are you talking about there, what can we talk about? What else can we talk about? If you know about Li Jingchen's girl, can you help us solve it? All right, don't ask, even if you ask me, I can't tell you. Xia Yuyan finished speaking and left without looking at him. Sitting in the car, Xia Yuyan smiled slightly, inexplicably angry at me, and looked at Xiao Su. Li Jingchen sat up and turned around to look at her. She was indeed angry and turned her head to tell the driver to drive slowly forward during the drive, Qin Gu looked at the two of them as if they were making a fuss and said, school will be able to enroll in the youth class in two months. Do you want to enroll? Why don't you report it? It's only four years since I reported it all. Can you help me pick it up, Xiao Ge? We won't be in the same department by then. 
Yu Yin got out of the car and dragged Qin Gu down to the front. With a chest wrapped and an atmosphere on her face, she didn't even take a look around her. Qin Gu smiled as she looked at her. 